So very good evening to all the participants who are here today. And uh, this is the third session of uh, 3D Python Kickstart program organized by Sedlearn, a uh, leader in data science and AI. And I believe uh, day one and day two sessions have really given some insight of what is Python, uh, some concepts of Python and also coding, right? So we are also happy for the interest that you guys are showing in learning with us. And we expect you all to travel learning with us in the future too. And uh, suggest you to follow our social media platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram uh, for all our uh, upcoming programs and uh, special events related to our courses such as data analytics, data science, and AI. And also visit our website, sedlearn.com for all these courses. And we would want you to build your career as a data analyst or data scientist, which are really the demanded professions in the market now. And uh, if you need any further information on any of these courses, do visit our uh, website, uh, sedlearn.com or write to us at hello at sedlearn.com. And you can also send us a personal message on WhatsApp and we will be happy to assist you uh, in building your career with one of these courses. And uh, apart from this, we have received your assignments and uh, really appreciate your interest in uh, solving the assignments. And as informed, top three performers would be rewarded with gifts and scholarships. And that would be posted soon in the WhatsApp group. Also, all those who have uh, shown some interest and participated in at least two of these sessions and preferably, you know, day two and three will be issued participation uh, certificate uh, from Sedlearn. And uh, so before moving on the session, I would also want to remind you guys to type your questions in the chat box and uh, you could also be interactive uh, during the session to make the session more interesting. And uh, as Rajender uh, informed, please uh, tune in your video on as we want to share, share a snap with you all as a token of participation. And uh, I would also like to announce that we have an eminent speaker today also from overseas as I've informed yesterday. And he's uh, Mr. Ram Krishna, Senior Project Manager at Atreides Collections based out at Amsterdam. And uh, I also have a very important announcement with regards to the scholarships for all the participants uh, we want to offer at the end of the session. So kindly stay tuned until the end of the session. And now, without any further delay, let's welcome our trainer, Mr. Suresh Kadari, an air practitioner with over two decades of experience in India, UK, and the Middle East. And uh, sir, very good evening and welcome to the session. And the session is all yours. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks being here. Okay, 25, that's a good number. Uh, thanks being here and uh, thanks being great participants. One of the best uh, uh, you know, sessions I have taken. And uh, where is my friend Miracle? Uh, my friend Miracle is here. And Mohamed is here. These are uh, out of country participants. So I, I, I take personal care. Rest of the guys, I equally love you guys. So let's go ahead. Uh, today, what we would do is first thing first, I would share my screen. We took this challenge of uh, covering entire Python in three days. That was a big one. Uh, but uh, fortunately, we are doing well until now. Uh, how can I say that? So before that, let me show that. Today, we'll cover control loops, functions, libraries, and intro to ML. Somebody asked me, hey, uh, can we, maybe they uh, want to pursue their course in ML. That's why they said, okay, why don't you cover ML over there? So we will cover that. And uh, poll results. Okay, day one. Okay, it's uh, more than average is 70 plus. So pretty good. And uh, poll two, day one, it's good. It's good. Three is good. Uh, day two, poll one, uh -huh. no, 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 not good. Okay, but average in the other three, if you see poll two, poll three, poll four of day two, it's fine, but so the function, the word function, see when we say function, what is your function? That means we want to do certain, uh, you know, useful stuff. So that is our function. So something has a purpose. So we get a set of instructions or statements bundled up to achieve a specific task. Suppose if I give you a task of do this, do this, do that, and you want to block them or lock them so that you can repeatedly use that, which is what we used for for loop. In the for loop or while loop, what we did, we want to reiterate this entire uh, you know, block of code again and again, n number of times or fixed number of times. That's why we kept entire thing under for loop. 
for suppose you don't want to repeat number of times but you want to use the uh, set of instruction whenever you want it is not that you know uh, you run repeated times whenever you want whenever you call it hey i want to find out what is uh, a plus b so you have a fixed function and you want to call it and use it in the program so that's what it is called called okay so what we are talking about is a useful code yeah, i want to keep it somewhere so that i can call the useful code and use it whenever i want so this gives you repeatability okay reusability the main part of program you want you have a bunch of program and you want to shrink it the best part is reusability in the programming world if you are reusing the code that is very good okay so that is where we are talking about <clears throat> reusing the code uh, and for that functions are very good so what are the functions we have built in functions and we are user defined functions did we use built in functions ever the group did we use any built in functions until now yes sir what is yes, that print and input input yeah. output yeah okay output is the print input is the uh, in a function so input uh, of print functions we have already used these are all built functions built in functions okay suppose you are talking about you know length of uh, a string all those things are built in you don't need to reinvent the code what you are going to do inside you don't care uh, python developers they thought that okay these guys need to take inputs from the user give uh, display inputs on the screen so let them uh, let us help them by giving them built in functions so we already use them so they have a specific purpose you just call them how do you call them our friend said that print input oh the name of the uh, function is input the name of the function is print okay now we got a hint so that means whenever we want to call we are just using the name of the function okay followed by in a parenthesis so these parentheses indicate that is a function and then the name is the identifier okay so that's it a identifier and a indication that it is a function okay so in built in functions we already discussed about print hi there and whatever it is so somebody asked me earlier that what is that separator or uh, you know end kind of thing in the print function if you see there is an object there is a separator there is an end all those things are there okay so here we are only filling one portion of that in the function it is expecting object comma uh, you know separator comma and comma file output all this put together is called print okay but i'm here giving only one even then these are optional okay these are optional hence python is not minding if even if i'm not giving so most of the times print we use only one most of the times okay uh so it these are all optional and separator and output how file or you know display kind of thing so maximum maximum of these all things so you want to find maximum so this is a typical thing right anybody in the world who are uh, working on the numbers they may use average maximum minimum kind of thing so if, if you are a programmer and in that program if you create these functions and leave somewhere so whenever you want you just say max and then function is executed so that is what we are going to learn today then what else we have we have oh, why this is appearing constantly okay leave it now uh, user defined functions what are user defined functions these are you and i create these functions so python is uh, sorry the print and input are gifts from the uh, uh, python community we don't want gifts we will create our own this is what, what the exercise today's exercise is all about uh, so we you create a function a block of statements already i said that a particular purpose so what is the purpose find the maximum of the number find the minimum of the number find average so something you have a you know purpose and you build a block of code and you give a name called that particular max or minimum function so to create something i should tell you that i am creating a function right if not how would the interpreter understand that you are creating a function so for that we use the keyword called def so this is the keyword we learned about 35 keywords in python don't use that's what i said right so here whenever you use def then the interpreter will understand that hey this gentleman or the, and the lady want to create a function okay so this person want to create a function so they will use def and the name of the function so we are giving a name of a function i borrowed this uh, currently from somewhere so this is very good they explained it well 
uh, arguments. So you pass on arguments. What are your arguments? You give some values to it. You give some inputs to it so that the function will use as part of that. Earlier, when you say maximum of bunch of numbers, that those are the arguments you are passing on. Arguments could be single or multiple. Okay, it doesn't matter. So here contains a list of values, list of values, okay, values, plural, passed on to the function. So we are passing to the function. Good, we'll learn in a while. Then what happens? It contains a bunch of code. That's the function body of the uh, you know, function what we are created. So this will be executed every time you call this name. Whenever you're calling print, it is executing a bunch of values, okay? So this is the statements it executes. And also it has a function called, uh, it's a feature called returning value. Okay, that means it can return. After executing all those things, it can give back something, okay? So we will see all those things now. What is uh, I'm doing, going to do here is uh, def, that is a defining, I'm defining a function called say hi, I want to welcome you all one by one to the program, okay, too late but actually uh, I should have done that before. So welcome to Python. So if I want to say, hi, whenever you are switching on the computer, I want to run just first code is say hi. So whenever you're running the computer, this say hi will be initiated. When I'm initiating this, what I mean to say is the control will go here, okay? And it will go come here and it will say, welcome to Python. So when you're opening your windows, what it will say or, uh, when you're opening your uh, in a, in a Mac, it won't say anything, but Windows, welcome to Windows and that kind. So it is like display. Maybe there is a function called display, maybe function called you know, users. It will display all the users. So these kind of functions are running in the back end. So that's why you're getting output. So how does it know that it's you? Then I can say, hi, and I will enter name here. Okay, Satya. If I enter name Satya here, that name will go inside it and if I include that into here, it, it will say, welcome to Python Satya. Okay, so that is how you do that. So problem, this is a problem statement here, square values. So it is, do you, don't you agree that we repeatedly use squared values? So here, one of you has said that, so I want to create a function called square. Then, okay, first create the function. Always create the function first, then use it. Okay, earn before spending. Okay, so create the function and then use it. So define, def we are defining what? Square, the name of the function is square and I'm expecting some value from you. So you must give me some value. Once you give me that value, I will multiply that twice. That means it is squaring. Three times it is cubed. So I'm defining what I wish. So once I do that, I will print it. So I got a number here. This is the normal sequence of uh, events. Uh, and when I came here, I used the function called square. I call the function called square and I'm passing on five here. So the control will from here, it will go right there. Okay. And S value is five now, five multi times five. So 25, it will be printed. That's it. So whenever you're giving square five, it is printing. You get it guys? So this is how the magic of I do something and it automatically does. It's nothing. You are creating functions. Okay. When I say print high, it is automatically thinking, taking high and sending it to the function. Somebody use a defined function and it does all the things, places all that. Okay. And power. I'm raising, uh, you, know, uh, you know, A to the power of uh, B. Okay. So this will be like this. Okay. So here I have two values to pass on. So two values I'm pass on, passing on right there and I can readily use that, okay? Got it? So that's all the artwork is for. And then we move on with user defined functions. We talked about power and okay, here what I'm doing is, yeah, I talked about returning, right? So not that every time you want to print here, who asked that every time you need to do the output, final output is printing. So no need to do final output printing right there. Sometimes you'll say that don't do anything, just let me know, I will use it whenever I want. So this is what it, so then you are returning. You do the calculation, don't print anything, just return me the value. So when you're returning the value, it is coming right there. Okay, you're calling it, sending the values, getting the output right there. So now from there, you're using it here. Okay, so I will redraw again. So from there, you are 
using it somebody asked me in the yesterday chat one of the gentlemen uh, asked me i don't remember the name what is this percentage d see this is what i mean to say i have three percentage d decimal values okay i'm doing here what i'm doing is okay, values i'm going to use or in the part of, as part of the print statement but print is known for you know uh, uh, giving the fixed outputs like hello hi kind of thing but if i want to add variables into that so we can do okay so what i'm doing whenever i'm using this percentage d i must supply the three percentage d values in the form of values or variables this is what whenever this the first one belongs to a the second one belongs to b and the third one belongs to c okay hope the gentleman learned it so default parameter so if you are giving you know uh, no unknown this is where i was mentioning that i want to invite each one of you so i will use a for loop over here say i use a for loop and i built a function called because i am running these kind of things parties so many parties so i will use a for loop and invite rakesh and i have a bunch of friends over here as a list i made bunch of friends and every time one by one it will go here and every time it invites and it gives the name okay so hi string see see it's a string s percentage s and i'm giving the name and it invites all the people one by one so that is how it's a default parameter is unknown you can also do that you guys need to practice then only you will understand all those things and can we create a uh, blank uh, kind of function yes we learned if for uh, uh, if and for everywhere whenever we want to create a blank one we are using something called pass okay so when we are using this you don't need to create a statement uh, right away so you can create afterwards so, so suppose I, i understand that i need to invite someone but nobody has given me what kind of invitation i should send so then not what i will do i will create a function called invite and use pass over here so when i'm doing that i'm saying that uh, this is a empty or you know a blank uh, kind of function i will use it later okay it won't create any errors or generate any errors over there okay what else we have here okay i got too many things yeah yeah i just mentioned here see i got e name which is bunch of names over here and i want to include all of you to my party is it party yeah so what i would do is i will pass on one by one and in the choice when each name enters i will call this function so that function is already written so anybody want to use reuse suppose in your office you created this function and suppose your friend want to use that function reusability of the code okay so in the programming world you do something somebody else works it. so it's not that i create entire you know million uh, line of codes always we share load so whenever we are creating all the functions will be uh, defined separately what all functions we need because reusability increases the speed uh, reduces the resource usage and so many other things i can talk about and passing on a list in total yeah you can do that i want to pass on not the entire you know for loop and each one passing on each one passing on what i will do is i will pass on entire list as a parameter yes you can do and the for loop of dividing or taking out one by one that goes to the function okay so you are executing here that for loop you are executing here here you are executing for loop here so this is just you know uh, playing around with the computing uh, recursion recursion is something like okay sometimes i am calling function okay and function should call itself okay it makes it sounds funny right so here i i want factorial i want to find factorial of number what is a factorial of number any smart guys over here factorial what we call as factorial so that means uh, if factorial of 3 means 1 into 2 into 3 okay there you go you got your chocolate enjoy <laughs> that's your chocolate satya so okay so what what we are doing is factorial of 5 means okay so 5 sorry 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 ah oh, i should have taken lower number okay so that's it so this is where you see here i know the sequence it is always multiplication so what i could do this is factorial of 4 see this is factorial of 4 then this is factorial of 
then this is factorial of 2. Okay, you see, n minus 1. Every time it is n minus 1 factorial, n minus 1 factorial, and lastly, n minus 1 factorial. So that means I can, a factorial contains a factorial of n minus 1. Okay, hope I did not confuse you. I'm just saying that, see, you could recognize 5 factorial is actually 5 into factorial of 4. Or you could say 5 into 4 into factorial of 3. Or, okay, so on and so forth. You guys are smart now. Okay, into 3 into factorial of 2. So everywhere, again, I'm getting factorial. Actually, where we did we start? We started at factorial at 5. Okay, so this is like I can call myself again and again because the function, the function is same. So here what I'm doing is first I'm getting five here as you have seen. Okay, and then finding factorial of four. Okay, that is how it is doing. So when I'm calling the control is going here and then n is n not equal to one. Yeah, <coughs> excuse me. If n is not equal to 1, because once you reach 1, you don't have need to do anything, then do this. Okay, what I'm written? This is what I'm written. Okay, and 5 into factorial of 4, then, then once it's 5, 4 is done, 3 factorial, 2 factorial, that is what you're doing. And end of the day, I'm printing everything. That's it. Okay, we will see when we reach our uh, practicals. Oh, good, good. Whole time. I love whole time. Okay, now what we talk about lambda. Okay, lambda. What is lambda? It is an anonymous function. What do you mean anonymous function? Without name. Sometimes I just want to do what I want to do. I don't want to give any name. So inline, single line function without any name is lambda. Okay, so you want to do something and immediately throw a, a, you know, a value. That's where we use lambda. However, even though it is a single line, you take inputs. You take inputs, do it, and send it. No frills, okay? Just like, okay, come on, I will do the job, take it, go away. Don't call me and all those. So that's why we reserved a name called Lambda. You don't want to, the formality of, hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Doing good and all those. No, 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 no. Just tell me why are you here? Okay, this is this. Okay, throw it. So that's why no name. It's only Lambda, okay? It's like typical. Uh, you know, any of your friends, somebody says, okay, well, why are you here kind? So here, when you use Lambda, we don't need to use any particular name. Syntax is Lambda, arguments, that's where it is important, arguments, and then the expression, what you want to do. Expression will have what? Operand, uh, operand and operator. So suppose you have, this is called expression we learned earlier. Okay, that's what. I got this obsession to do that. Okay, so here what I'm doing is you can pass on multiple arguments. Yes, that's what I learned over here, uh, but only one expression. Yes, okay, one expression. You can do, uh, you pa pass on any number of arguments, but I will do one job only. Okay, returns the result because it can't do anything, right? It's a single line uh, function. So how can I uh, do something more other than the calculation and all? So I can't uh, do anything, but just I'll return something, okay? These are used as inline functions. I said earlier, uh, inside other functions you can use. As we are recursive, you can use that. If you are not don't want to call the same function, but a different function, you can use a lambda for typical value. So here I have a square function. What I'm doing is, uh, uh, I'm doing lambda and then, okay, A is the argument I'm expecting. So whenever you're calling me from here, I will take that there and I will do five raised to the power of two, that is 25. That is what I'm going to throw out and you are using me inside a print statement. So you will print out, okay? You're not taking me into a variable, but you're printing directly on the screen. So math, it is uh, again lambda a and b. Those are two variables, and I want to do so. There is the two arguments I'm passing on there, and it is so. Here, when I'm doing math, the way the thing will come into back to square. Okay, so I'm not I'm written, but I can't print. Okay, so here power of two. This power goes two here. When it returns, this will have whatever it is done. So I can use it there. And I can use power of five. So whatever it is, I'm just giving that. I can 
you know argument i can pass and i can print out because i will get the return over there that's all we have time for and uh, lambda is uh, you know here lambda and python what am i doing here okay 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 so here what am i doing i have a list of numbers which are called student marks and i am i want to find out only the even numbers am i doing that yes i am finding the even number what is even i know you everyone of you knows but just to make you you know so here what am i doing i want to find out only the even numbers so how can i use lambda for even numbers you have a function you have a uh, one execution okay then you have one of that so i can't do so many things so i will use of the, this method called filter okay okay how am i doing so first let me find out whether this is even or not okay then i will filter those only so this condition i am using for filtering okay so filter what should i filter filter whoever passes this condition from that so the variable or the argument takes one by one checks the condition filters it passes on as you are the logic developer you are creating a logic you know that you will get all even marks so you created a variable called even marks and you are printing there that's it it works i'll show you it works okay here what i'm doing i'm mapping here again we will see in that so you could use you know you could do that a to the power you know, multiply by 2 and then map them over here okay you do that so that's what we will do we will see in the practical okay and then here regular expression it is to find a particular so you have a big text you want to find uh, or some uh, in a where it starts here when you are using this it is a initial it is starting with that or it has uh, you know at all find all ai in the text so ai is here ai is there it if it is there so regular expression is a specific sequence of characters that allow you to find match okay match or find is it matching is it there that kind of thing in a group of strings so this is regular expression in python not much you says we have other variable uh, other things are available but i need to tell you that it is there so i told you okay before poll time i need to take you through okay nested functions yeah nested functions okay nested functions we we talked about nested for loops nested if statements so and so so i don't need to brief you it is like having a function a function or oh sorry even this includes a function inside a function okay so that is what we are talking about a function inside a function okay so that is what is nested function so we had enough uh, experiences with that functions so that is my dictation on okay so this is out of function okay you are cre creating you are calling the out of function and you are passing on this argument over there that becomes a text which inner inner function you are getting it okay so you can use all those things because here under this we are calling so why are we doing this first defining the function and after that will anything happens uh, if i do uh, uh, that over there will anything goes wrong let me see yes so it is saying that inner function you are referring whatever you are referring i don't know what is that so it is a interpreter it is not a compiler that's the thing so it stops there you see there it stops there it is saying that what is this hey just go down no no i am interpreter i go line by line so you said something which i can't understand there is goes i stop i'm stopping okay so that's why always we okay we do that okay so you're calling inside this outer function you're calling the inner function so again it goes back and prints the text that's it so this is called as a function inside a function or nested function good good so here uh, so s equal to i love python coding hopefully and i am saying me too so that's it okay so you execute it it will come there okay so why this is coming second because s i'm executing after executing the function 2 that's why me to coming first and then okay huh? that's all it is going lambda we talked about it is a anonymous function we have spoke about i just want to show here how it works so 5 and 2 these two uh, uh, variables uh, or arguments i'm passing on here and 5 raised to the power of 2 
and that is what in the coming in the math i'm printing that okay so always returns no uh, printing and all you can't have a sequence of or a block of code always returns it okay and here i am what am i doing i'm giving here and catching over there and i'm printing over there okay so that's all we have regular expression we talked about look at yes at the zeroth position of the 22 characters it is doing it okay here is there ai in it yes you have twice it is appearing so sometimes you want to find out whether you know in the entire text okay uh, entire text i say uh, any sad word is there okay suppose um, uh, it, uh, the rain in spain is bad oh god you said bad it is a native word so let's see whether it can catch i would want to check yes okay there is a native word so suppose you want to in the length of text chatbot you are creating and you want to find out any negative words are there you want to highlight those native words we have other methods to do but this is it okay so there is a negative word okay or is there any positive word then you can say all these things already creating as a list okay you are creating as a list then you can say how many you use a count okay out the length and you say how many bad words or how many native words how many you know, positive words you can create okay those all your you know creativity comes in ram is here thanks ram thanks for being there uh, i was i was given a shout like 7 o'clock okay maybe we will finish with the guest lecture expert uh, uh, after this and then we will proceed with uh, you know my session later because uh, ram is so nice of him that he's <laughs> is from netherlands and he joined a friend of a friend and uh, he was kind enough to share his experiences uh, with us so let's hear out ram first after the poll goes uh, you're done with the poll we'll hear out ram he shares his experiences and then we'll continue with the class okay guys that's it i'm ending the poll so guys let me introduce our guest speaker uh, mr ram krishna senior project manager with uh, attitudes collections based out at uh, amsterdam he also carries immense experience in various uh, leading mncs such as genpact uh, pensky logistics based at the netherlands viewpoint and uh, ibm uh, so mr ram very good evening and a very warm welcome to the session today so we thank you thank you for having me yeah. yeah so we would want you to impart your uh, valuable experience uh, sir on the emerging technologies and the demand in today's market with the participants you know definitely thank you for having me i mean uh, also a nice introduction of my profile uh, you saved me a few minutes already <laughs> i i did put together a few slides to share my uh, thoughts with the uh, students so if i can share my screen and uh... all right so i uh, are you seeing my slide uh, python yeah. after yeah. thoughts yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, i see you know there are close to 30 participants and i assume you all are not joining from the same location and that's the power of your virtual community right uh, so i wish everybody uh, a good evening or good afternoon wherever you are uh, thank you for having me on the session so i uh, was talking to uh, rajendra prasad or my family friend uh, he told me about this workshop what is going on and uh, i was really uh, excited uh, to be part of this uh, and i can imagine you know three days of grind looking at the 10 or 15 minutes of session what's going on i'm sure your brains are hurting <laughs> <laughs> so i i'm sure you will have a lot of uh, thoughts after the session uh, i myself uh, have went through this grind of uh, uh, joining uh, courses learning hands on and trying to apply wherever i can so i i know the feeling trust me and if you were going to say you know uh, it's i don't it's not that you woke up one day and you just decided to learn python if you are here i can imagine that you know you did your research you thought about it you spoke to your friends you spoke discuss with your colleagues and then you are here for a purpose and that's already a great start that's a great start you you took a decision to venture into something that you haven't done before i'm assuming if you had done before then probably you're brushing up your skills which is also a good thing but the thing is after you have this uh good start and picking up that momentum you don't want to lose the fire of the learning spirit that's why 
i think you know it's important to pause for a moment you know reflect upon why you actually started uh, this journey of learning python and hang on to something which might help you bring back to the learning board when you're losing some inspiration you know when you're getting bogged down with the results you're not getting the inspiration you want i hope this 10 minutes will help you come back to the learning process so i was going to introduce myself but uh, madhavi thank you for doing a quick introduction so uh, I'm, i'm i'm not an expert by any means uh, compared to uh, you no know, uh, the professionals out there uh, but i can share my experience uh, from the point of view of my hands on experience and how i view the world and my experience uh, in the uh, last 17 years of working experience uh, but this is not a fact what i'm saying this is my experience right so you have to come to your own conclusions so based on whatever i'm showing you here uh, if you like this take it away with you uh, if not you know do your own research don't take uh, what i'm saying for as a matter of fact so you know this is what i had on mind you know when you are sitting through this session and uh, talking about it practicing it and i'm sure you have these kind of thoughts if any of you are saying you know i i don't have these thoughts then you're probably lying i bet <laughs> so one of the questions i can think of you know how much money can i make learning this thing you know is there any uh, uh, potential in terms of uh, getting a higher salary or getting a decent job can i make a full time living out of this or you must be thinking you know is this something really for me uh, am, am i the person who can actually learn a programming language and do something with it or you must be somebody like you know i hate coding but you know somebody pushed me into this and so I, and it, there's been a lot of hype about python over the last few years and you might be thinking okay let me just go and check what what's a big deal all about and you probably are joining this workshop to experience that so wherever you are uh, and whatever uh, you know mental space you are working with uh, if you have one of these thoughts you know hopefully uh, you'll find the answers through my next few uh, minutes of talk so let's zoom into the first thing right oh yeah don't tell me money is not important you know that's one of the key drivers uh, why we do what sometimes uh, the things we do uh, but also there is some times you need to find a good balance between uh, doing something for living and doing something you really like and i hope you will find that balance uh, in your in your journey but if you just look at it objectively from the point of you know is there a, a good uh, compensation for this profession or when you pick up you know using python as a professional uh, software developing language you know there is you know a quick google search you know gives you this uh, result that you could be making anything between 67 50 80000 to 120000 beginning on you know depending on your experience level could be a beginner junior or a mid senior level or senior level so there is uh, definitely a decent compensation if you are looking you know purely from the point of making more money after learning the language and then you probably also run into uh, this question of okay java has been the most dominant programming language over the last 15 20 years python is picking up pace now you know should you learn java or python you know yeah, that, depending on your con situation you have to make the choice but again if you are just comparing in terms of salary uh and you're trying to make a choice you know is it going to be java or python you know you will will be faced with a quite a bit of a dilemma uh, going head on head as well uh i put in some source uh, here it's all from google research nothing that i came up with my own thesis or something like that the next question uh, i want to explore uh, is you know when you're thinking 
about is this really something for me you know uh i want you to take a moment and do a quick introspection you know you have to ask yourself and observe uh, your own working style and and you have to place yourself you know where do you fall in one of these two categories you know i'm i'm not uh major in uh, psychology or anything <laughs> but i can uh say this you know you when you ask yourself certain questions based on the answers you get you can decide for yourself to a certain extent which will help you make some decisions in your life right so the first thing you want to ask yourself is you know if you find a greater sense of satisfaction when you do something on your own you know that's one kind of a personality or you could be the someone who is just interested in getting things done doesn't matter whether you do it on your own or you get somebody to do this for you what is important for you is getting it done right so i want you to ask yourself this question and then if you find an answer uh look at it from that perspective if you are somebody who is on the extreme left of this spectrum or somewhere in between you are you can say that you know you have a hybrid skills you know you're, you're like little, doing a little bit of both so that's also okay and there's no right or wrong here it's all about finding your self and doing what is right for you so let's say uh hypothetically some of you are falling on the left hand side and you think that okay i'm an executioner i like doing things on my own i don't want to think about why i'm doing what no and what is it going to be at the end you just want to do what is told to you and you want to get paid for the uh time you're spending and for the value you're returning to the hour right so you might be one of this person so uh where you just want to execute if you are executing and you are somebody following instructions you have to anyways go through the same learning curve you know start small from the beginner to become an intermediate and more ex- and an expert so if you are beginning if you are just beginning and this is what i felt you know which is always working start small you know the the tools uh, i think kadri you're showing is a great way to get that hands on quick feedback that's what we want you know we we want we don't want to uh, write lengthy code compile it wait for the result only to troubleshoot <laughs> and find out you know it's not working so obviously start small you know form a peer group you know it, it's you can always get more things done when you are in a, in in you're working with a group of 3 or 4 people rather than yourself trust me uh and then complete few projects uh again i was uh listening to what kadri was saying i totally agree with you it's all about the practice it's all about the practice i see a an a guitar equipment behind uh, kadri's uh, wall yeah it's it's like learning the music it's not about you know watching a youtube video and learning the theoretical part of it right it's about hands on practice it's the same same thing here nothing new that probably you but it's good to uh, hear it from somebody uh, just to give you that assurance that's what it is there is no magic pill and if you are going for the intermediate you know you know look for some freelancer jobs kaggle is a great community you know go pick some projects do do it yourself again try to do it yourself or do it in a group whatever works for you pick that and once you become an experienced per- person you know you will already you must have found your path and something on the right hand side if you see uh i put the same information here even if you are a leader if you are somebody who wants to get things done it's 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 okay but you still need to go through the same learning curve because you'll be able to communicate better with your developers you'll be able to understand their world 
you'll be able to have meaningful conversations and come to a solution much faster than just uh, saying that, you know, I'm not, I don't need to know because I'm not doing it, you know? So having uh, learning something will help you uh, work together. You know? So uh, the way I see it is uh, this world will not work with either of them. You, know, you, you need both personalities, both skill sets, both competencies to have something beautiful out there, right? So it doesn't matter what type of personality you are, right? You know, learning this will empower you. If you're doing things on your own, you will find the power of, you know, getting to the result on your own. If you're do doing it with a collaboration with somebody, you will find empowering because you can have meaningful conversations with that developers. So it's for both of the personalities. So that was more of a theory, right? And if you just want to ask yourself, okay, just tell me <laughs> how how does it making sense if I learn this language in the world of data science or web development, you know, coming back to you know our real world uh, experiences, right? So again, there's a lot going on here, but I'm just gonna say that you know, in data science as well, you have different flavors. Uh, different level of experiences and different uh, disciplines. So for me, uh, something that I found really interesting and uh, always use as an example when I'm sharing with peers is you can break data science into three verticals. You know, you could within the world of data science, you could do analysis, or you, and you can become an analyst, or you could do data engineering, or you could do a data science in in, in in its fullest form, in its most mature form. So uh, going from left to the right, uh, the level of skills and the competencies and the kind of experience is, you know, in, uh, is increasing. And as you can see, some of the tools which are used in each of those disciplines, and you'll see Python featuring in uh, data engineers or data scientists. So learning this, uh, you will be able to, you know, venture into one of these verticals in the world of data science. But if you look at a uh, web development, you know, this is something beautiful, right? It's not some, uh, it's, it's not only limited to the world of data science and machine learning and AI. It's also, Python is also something which shows up in the, in the toolkit of the software developers. You know, when you look at the web development side of it, you know, a very simple overview here, you know, what kind of uh, tools and programming languages are required uh, by uh, developers for doing the front-end developing or back-end developing. You know, Python is something that you can use to do the back-end development. So you will definitely find a place and time to use this. Uh, it's all about uh, building that uh, competency and skill and trying to apply it in your real world. And the last question, right? Yeah. If you were saying, you know, I hate coding, I cannot do this, you know, think again. No, no none of us are born as software developers. No skill is easy. No, what is most important is we've taken the first step and you surround yourself with the right people. And I, I myself, I do project management for a living. I do not uh, have to sit and write the code, but learning Python, at least the basics, helps me empathize with my developers. You know, when I sit down with them and when I'm brainstorming about solutions, you know, they find it useful that I'm part of the conversation. Otherwise, you will end up with a situation where you're just another manager. You do not know what you're talking about. You do not know the world of the developers, right? So you can uh, have meaningful conversations. You can build relationships. Even though you're not here for coding, you can understand their world and build something together. So that, that's the, uh, I wanna end this, you know, by saying just this, you know, may, maybe I'm exaggerating when I say this, but, you know, it is true. 
you know it's uh, if you look at uh, what is our greatest strength in the humanity when you look out our entire evolution the moment we started speaking exchanging information we as a species you know evolved drastically so that power of that is a power of communication so when doesn't matter who you are whether you are a manager or you want to explore the career in the management vertical or you want to explore the career in technical vertical you know i urge you to take on the course and try something new because it will help you uh, reach your goal for sure so go for it i wish you all the best uh think about what has happened in the last 3 days and empower yourself you know uh, that's uh, all i have to share i hope i did not eat into a lot of your session time uh i thank you, you know, for your attention you can I stop sharing now yeah mm-hmm. Uh, so they said do you have something to say yeah no no it's up to you no it's it's a great great session uh, you know as he rightly said much of the things i'm writing down even i learned a couple of points over here mm-hmm. and a uh, uh, executioner and leader so both are required in this field yeah so i do something and my colleagues without them i am nothing so it's mm-hmm. like like and uh, you know most of them uh, he balanced between tech and <laughs> life kind of thing okay and that's that's very good approach and uh, and uh, coming to this uh, learning part and you know uh, exploring the stuff see what makes us learning is part of in every organi- organism but we ask questions we explore go beyond just beyond yeah. survival so that's where uh, get things yeah python he mentioned like uh, it's uh, applicable for web uh, application development mobile and all it's also for data science and all very good it's a balanced approach uh, it's something new for me i learned a couple of points thanks ram no problem uh, i think somebody I, has a question sir yeah uh, the future data scientist is it possible that will be extends visit us with ai uh, maybe it's a tech thing ram I, i'll take it over from there okay mm-hmm. sure yeah so all right Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ram, for for trying uh, spending time with us, and hopefully, see, always remember. Uh, I mean, uh, my students, like, don't go with uh, a mindset. You know, it's the horses uh, we we tie that ring, right? Why? Because you don't. They don't want you to look beyond. But as as uh, you know, uh, emerging tech. technology and 21st century resources you should be opening up okay so don't just be python python or data science data <laughs> science kind of thing okay data science is a domain expertise it's not a subject expertise domain so the more domains you learn the better so if you don't understand the domain what you will do with machine learning what you will do with python so you need to understand the domain the perspective of the domain so always data scientists are domain the more exposure so always when you're learning python don't just look at the code look at beyond yeah. that okay Thanks Ram thanks for sharing. Yep. Thank uh, you. I will uh, share these slides to Prasad and he can yeah. circulate among the sure. students if you like. So nice. And I've left my LinkedIn uh, page link as well if you yeah, are interested sure. to interact with me don't uh, hesitate to send me a message. We'll do that. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, nice you to meet you. Bye. <laughs> yeah you too. You too. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Generally we talk about library is a collection of books. meaning what you have various knowledge sources various uh, you know books and you go there you quickly gather whatever you want and refer to that and get the job done keep it back so library is typical thing in python so and it got functions and methods that you will use to perform lot of actions without writing the code again and again that's what we learned right uh, we talked about print or we talked about maximum of uh, numbers all those things we talked about so met- methods and functions somebody like you i must have thought that okay my friends may need print my my friends may need uh, input or they need this kind of uh, operations repeatedly they will use scientific operations or reading the file from the system or doing some uh, statistical analysis or printing for that matter as a graphical format or showing something graphical so all these are libraries so somebody thought about okay you need to read the file i will make something you need to use the scientific kind of calculations i will make one library for you and you need to do a lot of visualization i will make some library so that's where python became more powerful 
Okay, that's the beauty of Python. So whenever you're learning, you are using a lot of libraries when you go deep towards data analytics or data science. So here, suppose we have all these things, sum of one, two, three, four. So sum that defines it is addition of all things and simplifies my job. Okay, so in the MS Excel, we use that. So that's what a library can do for you. So in Python, we have NumPy. It is all about numerical Python. Okay, numerical Python. Pandas, it's used for data manipulation. And then Matplotlib, it is free, but some things are uh, you know, chargeable. So these are all open sources. SciPy, it is a scientific Python, scikit learning for machine learning algorithms. It's a beautiful one. You must learn this. Uh, there's a beautiful tons of code. But for that matter, when I was showing you our application, uh, okay, when I'm showing you my application, I went here. I did the data science job, something like that. And then when you go to model building, you are doing this, that is scikit-learn. You see, it is beautiful. So I need to just import it. This is what one of the projects done by students. So we do everywhere you use you know, libraries for that matter. So scikit-learn is one good thing. So coming back, uh, we have SciPy, it's numerical analysis and linear algebra and all. So what are we going to do? We going to import. We're going to import what we are going to import library, and this is alias. So suppose uh, now uh, your name is uh, some X Y Z, or suppose I will take Ram Krishna example. Like we call him Ram. So when we call him Ram, uh, we are referring to the same. So this is the short form. Okay. So like that, uh, Madhavi complete name is something else, but I just call her Madhavi, or you know just like that. Okay, when she will show to me. So Math. Okay. So when I do that, I'm giving an alias. Okay, I'm giving alias. So I don't like to call matplotlib.pyplot. plot. I will say plot. So don't worry about it. Somebody asked, what is this? This is an alias. Okay, it's a nickname. You know, we call it as a sweet name or nickname, whatever you call. Okay, that is what I don't want to call it as scikit learn. I will call it as SL. So next time, if I'm referring as SL dot, actually, I'm referring to scikit learn dot. So we import, we give alias and start using. That's it. Simple. And everything runs in Jupyter Notebook. One of my friend asked me, uh, like over here, so the Jupyter Notebook, yeah, in, in initial days, it, it looks you know, very clumsy kind of, but as Ram said, uh, at a cell level, you want to execute beautifully one by one, you can do, once you're happy, you can take the entire code out, okay? And moreover, I will show you, you can even import, export as uh, you know PDFs, in many things you can do on Jupyter Notebook, okay? And you can prepare your own notes. It's not that when you're using SciPy, I mean, I, I'm not saying that when you're using you know, PyCharm and all, I'm not blaming them, but you can't prepare your notes, you can't keep images, learning is not good. So here you can do all those things very well, okay? And then NumPy library, it is a numerical Python used for in the Python uh, for working on arrays. Array is what? Okay, uh, you can have two-dimensional array, we say as matrix or whatever, or we can use a three-dimensional array, uh, okay, which is, okay, like that. We can use three-dimensional arrays, okay, multi-dimensional arrays kind of thing, or simple single and a row kind of thing. So this is where you keep numbers or whatever data and you can, so these all arrays you can use, okay, using NumPy. And then scientific computing, it's very good. Okay, scientific computing, that's why you are showing as the logo itself shows like that. So numerical analysis, uh, linear algebra, and matrix computations, multidimensional array functionality, random number generator, this is ocean. Believe me, you need to give me three, four days to brief you and you will fall in love with that. Okay, if you're uh, liking Python now, you will really love the course, believe me. Okay, this is like a testing. Why we are doing is to give you a taste whether you are up for the game or not. It is not that whenever I, 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 I uh, uh, so rarely I counsel students, but I counsel, I say that, are you ready? First of all, if you are ready, I can teach. Mentor, as a mentor, I got knowledge, I got experience, but are you ready? If you are ready, then only come to it. It's not for the money, you are hard earned money. So whenever you're uh, you know, trying to learn something, you know, here and there, bit piece, no, no, go with a structured program. Structured program and invest yourself. Once you invest, you will learn, okay? You will have ups and downs, that's what life is, but you need a mentor, and a proper course anywhere you can learn, okay? So fix it that you can learn and believe in that you will do it. Do it. Uh, Pandas is a Python library about data wrangling and analysis. Okay, we do data wrangling analysis using Python. So usually when you get data in the 
uh, from the databases when you get data so you get in a excel s or csv format okay so when you get this you need to work upon this data uh, bring it to your computer and then run python program and all those things correct so this is data wrangling analysis graphs all those things it will help you to do okay that's why pandas is one of the beautiful thing and frequently used one okay excel files all those things missing values so when you are extracting data from uh, uh, database you will have a lot of missing values unwanted values outliers all those things merging and joining data sets you get data set of customer you will get data set of sales you need to merge them to prepare you know all those uh, you know bottom line charts and all slicing and indexing i want only portion of that or this part we can do that data coding pivoting and data tables beautiful things all those things don't get scared about these uh, jargons or the you know these keywords okay that's how when you started python maybe if you are the one of them i'm not saying generalizing but when you started python course you may be not knowing everything and anything now i gave you basic of information just in 3 days so if you invest you can learn okay it's not only for the smart guys only thing i said is to you want to learn any programming language or you want to step into it you must have algorithm thinking and logical thinking that's it algorithm thinking i can invoke logical thinking you are born with it's your dormant potential so you're born with those so you believe in that and you can do it okay, uh, okay. then coming back uh, to our libraries we have matplotlib it's a numerical plotting data visualization i have so many crowd in this how many uh, students are there uh, there are uh, 30 male 20 female ah oh, no 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 what i will do is i will draw a chart and do that it talks more okay so it talks more if i do that it talks more okay so data in a visualization format it communicates well and effectively than uh, uh, okay uh, now you can see my screen what you can now see your screen okay so effectively you can uh, use it using data visualization visualization is the biggest part in data analytics when you talk about data analytics you're talking about statistical modeling okay you're talking about visualization dashboarding uh you know business intelligence such and such so here there is no coding much coding or no coding in data analytics so suppose you can add python okay that's always there because whatever you can do with uh, those r or power bi or advanced excel and all those things you can do with python okay so data analytics no coding but you can achieve what you want or you can use python to achieve what you want beautiful thing so data visualization is part of data analytics most of the times as a data scientist we don't uh, you know use a big sword to kill a small thing okay sometimes with visualization and data analytics the problem will be solved okay it's not that every time we use we go for a big battle and seaborn is another data visualization tool or library which use for you know attractive things we call it as you know seaborn uh, we get beautiful charts like this okay and uh, you know like this you can use matplotlib actually you can do that but seaborn you get graphical representation and all styling you can do well with seaborn okay pie charts these are common things uh, and box plot bubble boilings and then this uh, graphical representation scatter plots and all we will show you in a while and then matplotlib uh, library you go talk about histogram bar plots box plot heat map heat map is one good thing so you need you see here you have you know uh, variables here and here and you get the correlation as a heat map okay you will understand these things when you do it okay suppose you want to see whether what is the correlation between the height and weight there's a you know beautiful correlation but what is the correlation between height and buying a car oh, okay i can't say that so height and buying a suv or a sedan there could be some if the person is tall maybe they will go with uh, you know the suvs no no it doesn't mean that a person won't buy a sedan so what is the relationship so you can see in a heat map okay such kind and then uh, scipy is a scientific python high level of scientific computing advanced statistical analysis mathematical modeling and all you do with scipy see python until now whatever you learn it is so you know innocent kind of looking but when you use the library you are making it more powerful the same coding same easiness but you are doing more okay i will show you in a while how i do so that you can understand uh, uh, what i'm saying you can do okay within uh, say 6 months one year you will be me 
okay don't beat me okay uh, okay so by then i will also start learning so so you can never we will keep the gap always or i'll try to get always so web scraping is a method we use usually to obtain volumes of data from the website so suppose before saying that if it is online if it is available doesn't mean that you can take it okay i said this okay then it is if it is there and the website guys allows you you can take volumes of data suppose you, are, you want to invest in the stock market one of the projects we are working right now is you know uh, predicting or forecasting stock uh, depending upon uh, you know uh, some uh, uh, parameters are there we are using that that's a black box we don't want to discuss but the, then we go to websites which publish upon what's happening in nasdaq what's happening in uh, you know hong kong or india bsc nsc everywhere we have these indexes we go there we take some data from uh, private websites which they allow and we can analyze that okay or we pay to those websites for the data so web scraping is part of that okay suppose you have a company you have a uh, or you got organization which uh, hide your services and say that my customers are commenting on my chatbot or whatever it is can you uh, do the analysis then you go web scrap it and do the analysis so web scraping you know it's like uh, uh, hacking ethical and non ethical kind of things so you be on the ethical side so majority of the data is unstructured html data yeah that's the key it is unstructured and the html format so you turn it into structured in a spreadsheet format where your job starts so it's all about making the unstructured data into structured format so that you can use that uh, to gather from the websites web scraping variety of methods you will use specific apis all those things come again and i will teach maybe we can we can i can i can uh, run a program on web scraping in future okay stay tuned and uh, we will post you slowly now i'm i'm getting it okay i will i will run a one day kind of thing on web scraping later okay guys uh, then comes learning process this is where do i have a poll for that maybe i will do it in the last so learning process so you and i learn even the animals learn that was i said right however we uh, animals learn to survive we learn to excel that's where where we the teeny tiny my skin is few micro uh, you know my micron thick and i became or we all became uh, you know at the foot top of the food chain okay so how we learn beyond the necessary okay we we try to you know engage all the things but that is where the task and the experience or and the performance we analyze so this is where tom michel in 1997 said that uh, you know your e multiplied times of t it is performance so a computer program is set to learn from the experience so we learn from experience animals learn from the experience some kind of task so that it measures the performance so in animal world it works they will capture the behavior it doesn't work they leave the behavior but we we try to improve the behavior you're getting it right so you uh, beat on the rock uh, it breaks then you leave it no then where is the statue will come up so you break break and your performance increases and becomes a beautiful statue that's why we became top of the you know food chain because we always measure the performance and improve it so if you have input data called and you know, a playing checkers and the task is playing checkers your performance will leave, will increase when you increase the experience you more times you do that then your performance increases okay that's what he said e multiplied e times t is p that's where the machine learning entire thing started okay so then what we are talking about is we need a training data and the training data is given to an algorithm which learns just like human beings which learns like a human being so whenever we are giving this as i mentioned you guys you have in the learning base of systems algorithm forms its own hypothesis or it goes logic that's what happening here okay i gave you centigrade i gave you fahrenheit these two temperatures two columns i gave you and you will check that uh huh oh there is a there is a rule for that so centigrade equal to 5 by 7 times f minus 32 because 32 is the you know my, my zero point for uh, fahrenheit okay if you are not from technical field sorry i am from technical field so these things we can remember so c equal to f by 9 5 by 9 into f minus 32 that means you found a logic between these two parameters that's how when you give this to an algorithm okay this is uh, suppose centigrade this is fahrenheit it will find a you know logic so you give centigrade it can find fahrenheit or you give fahrenheit it will find centigrade 
So that's the logic it won't give. So we call it as hypothesis. And when you give a new input, it predicts the output. That's it. So now if I learn this, I can predict new output. So machines and humans are learning just like same. That's why we are talking about machine learning. It's not machine technology. So y equal to mx plus c, that is the linear regression. So this is it. When you have a graph and there is a line, there is a slope called m, x, y, and the intercept c, where it is intercepting. So that is y equal to mx plus c. Come back. If you want to learn machine learning, I'll teach you that. Okay, guys, we're moving on. So what is this model we are talking about? You compress this knowledge and you that code you're building, that is the model. So a model gets its input, okay, training data, and then learning algorithm. There will be an algorithm and the logic is divided so, so that I can reuse it. Okay, so I, I, I will call you and okay, suppose you are a machine, just imagine you're a machine, you don't know anything. So I built you a model uh, built over here. Then I call you and they say that, okay, this is the data set. I will take some part of the data set called training data set, I give you. And they say, watch this. What is this animal? I don't know this animal, just watch. What is that animal? Oh, it has a snout, it has two eyes, googly eyes. Okay, nice, good, good, good. Okay, then you have something called idea. And what should I call this? call this a dog. Okay, now you got a label called dog for the images, whatever you have. Then I give you a data point, a new dog image, and you will say, ah, I look at this image. Okay, this one looks like just like a dog with the label dog. However, I'm only 98% sure. So that's why I always said that machine learning is all about predicting accuracy or acceptable you know, uh, uh, confidence level. So that is how the entire machine learning works. Okay, good, good. So machine learning, again, uh, deep learning is part of it. I'll show you in a while. Suppose, let's prepare coffee. So what I would do, strength and sweetness. So coffee could be defined by strength and sweetness. Okay, you would use milk. I don't use milk. So I am a black coffee guy. So you, we will spot it on. So what we do is, okay, there is strength and there is sweetness. So I need to define for this group of uh, you know, learners, I want to make the best coffee or acceptable coffee. So what I do, I select the data points. For each one of you, you are placed over here on the strength. Somebody likes uh, you know, uh, low strength and somebody likes high strength. Suppose we are talking about all those things. So we got a point over here. Maybe this is Sanket or uh, this is uh, Rakhi over there or uh, you know, uh, Smita, Smita over there and Mohammed over there and then Miracle over there. So I got it. So once I have all these things, so I do... You know, these guys are sweet guys and these guys are strong guys or whatever. I define them. So now I choose a coffee, strength and sweetness at that level. Maybe that will work out. So this is the way you, your prediction. If I do here, maybe 76% of the guys will love it because I can't satisfy 100% always. So I will keep there. Okay. So that is what it is all about machine learning. And programming, I said, this is certainty, logic already pre-built, and machine learning learns its own logic using the algorithm. That's it. Here you give only inputs, and the, the, uh, the logic is fixed, fixed functionality. But here you give inputs and outputs. Okay, this is Fahrenheit, this is centigrade. I give both. Then it looks at, ah, now I learned it. So that is where the logic is built over here. That's it. And then what is machine learning? I mentioned it within quotes. It is the ability or teaching machines to learn from the data without explicitly programming. So we have as part of machine learning, we have supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. Okay. So this is classification and regression comes under supervised learning. What is supervised learning? This is supervised learning. So what I'm doing is I am giving you input and also output. And I'm saying that observe that. What do you feel? This is a Fahrenheit, this is centigrade. What do you feel? Ah, there is a logic kit. Yeah, I'm supervising the learning. That's why supervising learning is more, you know, uh, uh, chance of success in humans is higher. That's where I always say, get a mentor, don't go online or, you know, and YouTube and all, because that is unsupervised learning. What is that? There is a video, and now you learn. Okay, I got a doubt. Look around, you won't find anyone. So that is unsupervised learning. Humans are not designed for unsupervised learning, but machines can do, okay, you don't understand, 
and nobody can say it. Let me try. Okay, the customers are coming into the superstore. They're buying everywhere, left and right. Okay, what should I do? I don't understand anything. Then you would say that, hmm, look at, at morning 8 to uh, 10, maybe, uh, you know, women are coming more. 10 to 11, men are coming more. Women are buying this more. Men are buying this more, that more. And most of the products, you know, usually the staple food, they in the superstore, anywhere you go, you observe this because this is a survey done by a case study and the data scientists proved it that the staple food will always be at the farthest end of the store. Okay. As you go for your, you know, wheat or rice or dal, uh, we call pulses and all, you go for all those things essential, though will be the farthest end of the supermarket. So you will pass by all these things. So you look at there, I want that, maybe I need this, maybe I need the stapler, I maybe that stationery or sauce and all. You buy, buy, buy and go and buy the necessary one. Okay, that's the placement. How did they come up with that? Maybe the Walmart and big guys ran the supervised uh, uh, learning. They put all the things, uh -huh, everyone is buying that. Let's keep at the farthest end so that they will pass through the unnecessary things, do that. And while you, everyone waits, uh, hates to wait, and when you are waiting at the counter, you will find chocolate, which is a sin. So you're like, mm, maybe one won't kill me. Or, oh, I remember I need a pen or you need a stapler. So those kind of items, because this is again analytics run. So in the world of, you know, the current world of data, uh, uh, you know, centric world, I smile when I say that everything behavior we observe. As a data scientist, when I create stuff, we observe the behaviors. I need to observe your behavior and the attitudes. So if I know your behavior and attitudes, I can make you do, or, or I, mean, I can't say I'm not hypnotizing, uh, maybe I sounded wrong. Uh, I can predict your behavior further action, future action I can predict, okay? And comes reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning like we use on dogs, okay, on kids. Okay, if they do good, you give a chocolate. They will do it again and again. If they're doing wrong, you take the tab. They won't do it again. So reinforced learning, you can treat machines like your babies. Of course, when you're starting a machine, there are no neurons, okay? I will talk to you about neurons in later classes. I mean, next time maybe uh, the deep learning, you create neurons. So when you're reinforcing, the neuron is getting stronger and stronger. That's all. So now let me create a algorithm in your mind, okay? So a logic in your mind. You see these missing numbers. How much time I got? Okay, I won't just take more. If you see this missing number, can you find out what is... The missing number? Can anybody quickly? What four. is the first missing number? Four, four. And eight. Four okay, and good. Two. And here? Seven. And, and 15. Yeah. So see your, your machines, because I gave you data and you are building your own logic. So this is what algorithm does. Okay. I give you data, you build your own logic. But I say, are you sure? Then you will give me a logic like this. What is the logic? This is like, if you use this logic, sir, it will never fail. How? Uh, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, 2, 6, 6 plus 1 is 7. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 times 2 is 14. Plus 1 is 15. That will never fail. Did you do that logic in your mind? No, actually. So that is the equation, actually. As human beings, if I extend this to thousands, you will fail. That is the you know, shortfall of a human being. We try to go with the low-hanging fruits. But if I make it into millions, you will fail. So that's where we create an equation. That is the hypothesis, whatever machine learning creates. Okay, This is the logic it creates. So next time you give anything, the output prediction will be there. So next time I will teach you those things or you join the machine learning, you will learn beautiful. So beautiful, beautiful things, guys. Okay, missing numbers, tuples, you can do the same thing. Okay, you build your own logic. As you do, machine does. That's why it is called machine learning, not the machine technology, guys. Okay, data science, I told you machine learning. I told you it is a discipline. It's a domain knowledge. We are always interested in the insights. And here it is an you know, ability to learn. And deep learning, it is imitating the human brain. That's it. The subset of machine learning inspired by the function of human brain. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have much time. And I will give you the example. This I created. I love it. Uh, I, I, I love this Angry Bird and uh, 
uh, pigs. So there's an eternal wall. And maybe I created an artificial intelligence uh, robo called Cookie. I gave it, I'm, I want to support my friend Angry Bird. And so it got so many, you know, cannonballs. It, no, it doesn't know how to use it. It got a cannon and uh, various sizes of cannonballs. What you should do, you should fire them all. When you don't know, that's it. So now when they are using it, when these two guys are using it, they found out that when you go with the smallest one, it is going and hitting the wall. Okay, this is what you are learning out of experience. The machine learning does that. It will consume the entire data and then figure out that, okay, now if I use a small ball or cannonball, then it is reaching the target. Okay, that is the learning. We humans do that by experience. Catch the fire, it burns. Oh, next time don't catch the fire. Every child, you must leave once. Okay, as a mother or father, we don't try to, okay, don't, don't do it. But no, leave it. Okay, unless they want to cut and all. They touch, oh, it fired, then no more. Okay, so I, I, I did that with a child. I just left it and touched and then everything, he does that, he does that. Then slowly he understood that what is a bright red is hurt. Whatever other colors would hurt. Okay, it's own learning. So in this cannonballs of the data algorithm is how it works and model this entire firing. How to use for that distance this ball for this distance this ball. So all those things the model is built. Next time they go for a war, they know what to use and they built a hypothesis function for optimization. Thanks, good. So machine learning, all about, as I said, supervised learning, somebody is supervising the learning, okay? The features and the label I'm supervising. Unsupervised learning, I just ask them to do fire it, okay? So uh, supervised learning, you will have all this training and all, I won't go through all. Unsupervised learning, leave it, let them fire and they understand this. I don't know why, but this cluster of uh, cannonballs are reaching there. I don't know why. So there is no supervision here. So I don't know why, but they're reaching. So I will use it next time. Okay, that's it. So unsupervised learning again goes into, you know, there is no uh, feedback kind of thing. It goes there. And then reinforcement learning, it is I reward. Whenever you fire and it reaches there, I will take away your chocolate. And then when you're doing this closer, closer, increase the chocolate. Then you understand that, okay, whenever I am using the smaller one, my programmer, is happy that means i must be doing good okay so high reward no reward and small reward it that's how you tune this is what is classical conditioning in the field of psychology okay so supervised learning regression classifications unsupervised learning clustering and association it is all about who is involving are you playing along with the uh, machine learning no then it is unsupervised yes it is supervised reinforced learning that's all and deep learning it is subset now you're driving car, you, whenever you're driving, you're maneuvering the traffic, effortless driving, but actually so many neurons are firing, okay? That is what we are talk, talking about, neural networks, okay? Uh, so the neurons are created, now it is, everything is connecting to making, you know, you drive well. Okay, that's all guys. So that's what we are doing in a, a, road, in a artificial uh, driverless cars. We are just imitating human brain. So whatever you're doing there, check left, check right, you have cameras, input comes, and it is doing it. So not, not much thing. So it is imitating Huber. So when you go into deeper neural networks, you will understand those things. Okay. So a convolution neural network, CNN, RNN, all those things will come into that. Okay. So MMB, uh, Madhuri will share you the brochure with you. You will find that uh, full version. But here, see, the world is full of data. When you need, when you learn the data analytics, which is statistical modeling, visualization, uh, and uh, uh, you know dashboarding, business intelligence, that's where you become data analyst. When you move on with machine learning, okay, you become data scientist, and you go with neural networks and all. That's where you come into deep learning. Where and all put together is AI. So AI is not a course. AI is these modules. So when data analytics plus machine learning, these two concepts you learn, that is where data science is. So at the data analyst level, Python could be added, but it is, has no programming. So de depending upon appetite, as Ram said, pick a path, travel. So you join, you try data analyst analysis and learn machine learning. If you fail, at least you'll be data analyst with knowledge of machine learning. You complete machine learning, try deep learning, fail, 
at least you will be a data scientist with knowledge of deep learning. Okay, it's all. So when you come to deep learning, you can't be expert of, you can't be ortho, you can't be cardiologist, you can't be, you know, all everything is under the umbrella of medicine. So you pick whether you want to work on NLP, machine vision, or autonomous kind of thing. So that's the world of uh, uh, no, AI for you guys. That's all. Thanks, sir. And uh, for all the time uh, you have took for the session and making it so interesting with all the polls and all that. So, and also we have seen, uh, you know, participants showing a lot of interest uh, by uh, coding along with you and uh, working on the polls and uh, with the session, I hope they could relate to the relevance and learning they got uh, out of the session from us. And uh, participants, thanks to all of you for showing uh, such interest uh, for learning with us. And uh, that was really encouraging for us too. And uh, so if anybody is interested to learn with us, the courses, the Python, uh, data analytics, data science, or AI, do, as I said, do visit our website, sedlearn.com, or uh, write to us at hello at sedlearn.com, or you can also message us on our personal uh, WhatsApp window, and we'll be happy to assist you. And uh, after this session, I would also be sharing the brochure uh, with all the details of all our courses uh, in the Python WhatsApp group that we have. So do not exit the group, be in the group, so that you will get more updates about our upcoming events and programs that we have. And uh, the next event I uh, would uh, want to announce you, the next two events would be data on data analytics and machine learning. And uh, I'll give you the date soon. And the batch size is limited to 50 only. So we would uh, post it in the group and uh, please follow the group uh, continuously. So that you could avail, uh, you know, the session uh, and uh, get the most out of it. And I promise you guys at the start of the session, right, as a token of interest that you have shown uh, in learning with us. So we would uh, want you to travel along with us so that you reach great heights in your career as Python developers or data analysts or data scientists. So here I have 50 percent, sorry, 30 percent. A uh, flat discount for any of our courses that you enroll before 28th of this month. And uh, we suggest you to stay connected with okay, us, as sir said, because on our social uh, media uh, platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, so that you would get the first uh, intimation and you could join us quickly. And uh, also, I would request you to share it across to your friends. So somebody who's really interested would, uh, you know, they would be helped with you. And again, we are actually overwhelmed with the interest you have shown in learning with us. And if anyone still has any questions, you can shoot it right away or mail us or uh, WhatsApp or send a WhatsApp message. Looking forward to see you as part of our team, you know, in learning uh, various courses with us. And <laughs> happy weekend to all of you.